Uh, before I kind of get started here, one of the things I was going to say is, you know, thank you all for coming. Um, I re really appreciate getting to talk to anybody about AppMaker. I'm super passionate about the platform. Uh, I've been working on it for two and a half years now, and I worked a lot of state agencies, uh, a lot of in, uh, private companies, and just all over the world on this product, and it really is an amazing product. But before I really get too far into it, you know, I was wondering if I could get you all to give uh, Evan a, a big hand for putting this whole thing together. You know, I really appreciate her as well. <laughs> she is really amazing if you get a chance to work with her. Uh, so uh, I've been a CIO for the New Mexico Attorney General's office. I started there in 2006, so I have a, a you know, I, I get you guys. I know where you're at. Uh, how many of you are in ex executive roles uh, where you're at? Couple, that's great. How about, who, who's a professional developer? I mean, like, you write code. Got one, <laughs> okay. AppMaker is perfect for everybody else in this room. No, I'm just kidding. It's great for everybody, but it really is a product that is targeted towards, um, towards your, your group. And so what I kind of wanted to talk about just a little bit was that there's actually a crisis that's coming, okay? You see there was one developer in the room, okay? We don't have an over overabundance of developers right now, yet we have technology that's accelerated at an extremely fast rate. You've heard of ML, you know, machine learning and AI and, and all those kinds of things that are coming out. And we want to be able to use them, especially in government, where we have a lot of siloed data, you know, where this agency doesn't share with this agency because it's on some desktop somewhere and those databases don't talk to each other. We have a lot of problems with that kind of stuff. And it causes huge issues, especially in like human services, where maybe one agency is not talking to the other agency with data and somebody's in the system and kids get given back to the wrong person or get be given back to somebody that they shouldn't have. We actually have cases where uh, one that was just in New Mexico where that exact thing happened, where somebody was in the system seven times, the children were taken away. The last time they were given back, they didn't, they died. Okay, so, and it was because of a data problem. And so that really is happening. We need apps that can start solving these situations, but we don't have enough developers to do that. Statistics are showing we're gonna have a 91% employment gap in developers by 2024. That's huge, right? So if you're thinking, well, you know, if I just wait a little bit longer, IT is going to get around to building my app for me that's going to solve all of my problems, right? That's just not going to happen. <laughs> you know, it's just really not. So what we need to start looking at is ways that technology can fix that problem. And Google's already figured this out internally. They've been using AppMaker for uh, seven or eight years now internally, and it's just become a publicly released project or product last June. So what they found was that, you know, Engineers are busy doing engineering and building the products that you all are going to use, like Drive and like Docs and spreadsheets and all those things, but they don't have a lot of time to do the, the production stuff. So like, you know, vacation requests and all those little paperwork things. I mean, how many of you are still sending inner office, you know, inner office uh, envelopes around the organization, right? Um, <laughs> wait, the developer's raising his hand. I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> So, so, you know, we still have a lot of those processes are paper-based, and maybe it's because somebody has to get a signature because we haven't figured out a way to do that yet. And so what Google's come up with is this thing called AppMaker, which is a low-code application development platform. And, that's, and, and they're not the only ones. There's a lot of other platforms out there. Uh, what's really unique about AppMaker is it's completely integrated and included in G Suite. So it's part of something you already get when you get G Suite. Uh, we've also had this new term called citizen developer. I'm going to be talking about them quite a bit today because that is a new trend we're seeing. Uh, citizen developers are those, those people that want to build apps. They're working in a business like most uh, business org ty type of a role where most of you are right now. And they're like, well, I really would like to get more done. You know, and, and I could probably do that if we had an app to build that, but I'm not going to go to school and learn how to be a developer. I'm not going to learn how to write code. Well, that's what a citizen developer does, is they get in, they have a tool that allows them to build applications very quickly without having to learn how to write a lot of code, or any code in some cases. So, and, and so AppMaker, you know, AppMaker's here to save the day. Well, <laughs> it is in a lot of ways. Uh, it, it is an amazing new tool. It is brand new, and it is, is really changing kind of what we can do to think about things. And that's also caused us to have to think about a little bit differently about, well, who is in the business unit? And who's the perfect candidate to be an AppMaker developer, right? And so we've just, through our experience in working with, with literally thousands of people on this, 
uh, is we found that there's basically four different personas that go into who an app maker developer might be. So we have installers. You know, they're like what you do with your phone when you go download the latest game, right? You download it and you start playing. Okay, it's ready to go for you, and you're just, just going to use it, right? Customizers, right? They're the people that want to get in there and change the color and maybe add some extra features and do things like that. They're not going to write any code. They're not in the traditional sense that you know they get in there and just start hacking away on code, but they're going to want to add features to something that already exists. The citizen developer we talked about a little bit already, they're going to originate something entirely new, right? It's not built. It just doesn't even exist out there. It fits a very unique need. And then, of course, the professional developer, they already know how to do all this coding stuff, but they need a tool that helps them be a lot faster at what they're doing. So I'm going to break them down just a little bit. Uh, what we have for installers, so an installer using AppMaker, what they would go out and do is they would go out and they would find templates. So we have uh, in AppMaker, there's already templates that can get you started that cover a lot of different use cases. Uh, we're working very closely with California and Colorado and Arizona to build template sets that are very specific to government. So we'd like to work with you all as well uh, and, and find out because government kind of operates fairly similarly across all the different demographics. If we had a whole template set that covered all of those, then we could do that. And they're very easy to install, um, which is what I'll actually show you now. So now let me just exit out of this full screen mode here. So I'm going to do some demos. Demos are always risky. This is, this is live. It's not staged. It's not a video playing in the background. So, you know, I mean, we could have an epic failure, but I'm hoping not. So this is actually the tool app maker. Uh, notice it is entirely web-based. This is a running on a Chromebook, so it's, it's a web-based tool. It's not something you have to install on some specific kind of Mac computer or something like that. It'll run in any browser. Um, and so if I wanted to start something new, I could just hit blank application, and it's going to load up here, and it's going to load my basically my development platform. So it's got a, a screen in the middle, and it's got things that it does on the outside. Um, I'm just going to uh, install a template from my desktop, though, because I can get the templates as files from different places that I might um, be looking for. So let's install this vehicle management template. Okay, ask me if I want to overwrite my application, which I do since it's blank. And it's going to spin for a second here. And what it's doing is basically what this gives us the ability to do is these templates are shareable. So if one agency creates a template, Every agency could use it, and they can import it just this easily. It puts in all the components, builds all my pages, builds all my SQL databases. I guess that would be important to mention. Google uh, App Maker does use Google Cloud SQL as its back end, so it's not one of those off-brand databases that nobody's heard of. It's not like Access that's siloed on a desktop computer or on some obscure server somewhere. It's Cloud SQL. It's robust. It's backed up automatically. We actually have more than 200 databases running with clients right now. And in the last six years, we have not lost a single record. It's extremely robust. Uh, it does automated backups, so you never have to worry about that part of the process. And um, that's great. So there's my app. It works. You know, it's, it's ready to go. I can start publishing it now. I've actually got a version of it already running here that's got some information into it. Um, this actually, believe it or not, this is a request from one of our local governments. Um, and what they wanted to do is they wanted to move from spreadsheets to something a little bit more robust. So if we think about our database in, in the terms of a spreadsheet, which is how they were tracking these vehicles before, is we have a vehicle, and a vehicle has a lot of information. We want to be able to search through a spreadsheet for vehicles. So what do we do with a spreadsheet? We go up to the top. Uh, of a column maybe, and we filter it, and then we can see just the records for that certain vehicle and things like that. Well, that's okay, but here we can show pictures of the vehicle or what other kind of ad asset it might be. I mean, this is vehicles, but it could be anything, right? It's a database. Um, so I can do searches for that and find my specific vehicle. I can see it with an icon, but now when I bring it up, it's a user-friendly display, right? It's not a row of data in a spreadsheet that I'm looking up at the column and looking down at the data and looking up at the column and looking down at the data it's actually displayed in a way that I can understand. Pictures and all those kinds of things, um, the details about it, and then I can start adding additional assets to that. So if you were to think in a spreadsheet, if you had a, a phone number listed, right, that takes up a column. If you want their cell phone, there's another column. If you want how many work phones do we get out, how many addresses do we get out, and our, our spreadsheet keeps growing more and more and more and more columns, right? 
And it's really hard to manage that. You're sliding it back and forth all, you know, to find out you know, where's this row, where's that row. We can organize it all in one single view. And of course, this works on mobile, right? So uh, spreadsheets, really hard to use on a phone. A uh, display like this where it's put into an app is very easy. You know, we can dive down into things like um, checking out an individual work order, and it can have a whole bunch more details, right? So this has individual work items that I can start specifying. And think about that spreadsheet, how complex it would be at this point. I mean, how many columns wide it would be. Or you have a different sheet for each one, and then you're constantly having to reference the numbers and refilter and refilter, and they get really confusing, okay? This puts it all in one place, and it organizes it in a way you can, you can, you can use it, and it even does things like adding rich text and additional pictures and things like that that can go into your, to your, that are just things you can't even do in a spreadsheet, all right? This app was built in less than three hours and has absolutely zero coding. So it's very powerful. <laughs> app Maker itself is a very powerful product. All right, let me skip back to our present. Okay, so what are some of the things you can build? Well, budget tracking and travel approvals, some of the things I've already mentioned, training. Uh, well, really pretty much anything you can think of, right? A few companies we've been working with and the, that are using the product, so it's, it's not new. It's definitely uh, getting quite a bit of traction. So let me skip over to the customizer, all right? So if you're keeping track on where we are in the presentation, we're to the second, second persona here. Uh, so they wanna add things, they wanna change things and, and make the app their own. And they may wanna add things like Google Data Studio. And I know we mentioned that a little bit earlier, amazing tool. It allows you to do these crazy awesome reports and dashboards like the one I'm showing up here on the screen without having to write any code to do that or be some kind of a, database expert, it's all just drag and drop widgets and a little bit of spreadsheet type language for formulas and things like that. So it's really easy to use. So the question is, well, can we, can we add something to, you know, as a customizer, can I actually add something as sophisticated as say email, sending an email to a client? Now that's a lot of work for a developer. You've got to set up an email server and connect to it with some kind of network connection and things like that and configure gateways and and firewalls and all kinds of stuff, right? Well, let's take a look at how we might do that in AppMaker. So I'm just gonna go back to that same brand new app that I just built. Again, I'm gonna use the import. And import an email module. Okay. And it'll get done importing. It tells me which assets it's going to import, and then I can just hit OK. And that feature is added to my app. It's just that easy. And, and so it's just a matter of taking a button from somewhere on, on, in the app and just taking that button and putting it wherever in my app that I want to use it. Now I have email integration completely built into my app without having to write any code. So it's really easy to customize anything that you might build in AppMaker. And of course, we want to have a million plugins, right? So to cover every kind of part of the market. It's a very new product, but we were really looking for a lot of people to take part in that. So, you know, whatever, whatever you want to build, it depends on what you need. You know, we're looking at the next place here, which is the citizen developer. Now, citizen developers are probably the most interesting crowd we've seen in development for a while because they're that crossover between, right? highly skilled at running a spreadsheet or figuring out some complicated things. They know what an app would look like if they were to build it, but they don't have the tool to do it with, or they don't have the knowledge to write the code to do it with, right? And so that's where we're seeing, well, what if we let them enter the market? What if we gave them a tool that they could build something as easily as I was showing you, where we just, we can install a template, we can modify it, we can have plugins. They can do the same kind of thing, but they can take it to the next level and add in all those extra features that they could. Or maybe they're building something that's entirely new. This is kind of how we visualize where that's at. Remember I said there's a 91% employment gap that we're facing. I mean, that's something that everybody's going to have to face and it's not going to go away. So whatever product you happen to choose out there, whatever platform you happen to go with, you're gonna to have to solve this problem within your agency. It's just, it's just a fact. Or you can continue to stay on paper, but that's not gonna work very well with all the technology we have coming in. So, uh, you know, we're looking at, there's gonna be a lot more installers than anybody else. That's just the nature of it, right? Most people don't wanna take the time to build an app. They just wanna pull something out of the box and use it. 
app is going to have tons and tons of templates to be able to do. It's already got tons of templates to be able to do that so that you can just pull something out of the box. It runs under the same security that all the rest of your Google account is running under. So you don't have to go get new security uh, clearances. They only run within your organization, so they're very, very secure. We actually had a security review done at one of the big organizations we're working with. It took three months, tons of penetration testing, everything else. They came back. They said, we can't crack it. We're giving you the highest certification available for the app, and we've never had somebody pass on the first try. So it's tough. It's really that strong. It's, you know, it's Google strong, right? <laughs> so it's got a great security model, and you're able to just allow your people and empower your people to actually be able to install these applications. Uh, the next, you know, next section down, customizers are going to take up a lot of that. You know, they're going to take those same templates. They're going to add a bunch of extra features and make them their own and, and change all the colors and make them beautiful and add your logos and whatever else. Uh, citizen developers are where we're going to see them basically doubling the amount of professional developers out there or even tripling it so that they can meet the need of originating things that just don't exist. You know, those, those strange ones that nobody has built yet. There's just not an app for it, and they're going to really be helping with that. Uh, one of the citizen developers we worked with here in a, in a private company, they were doing uh, cleaning services, industrial cleaning services, buildings like this one. Somebody's got to clean it, right? And uh, they came and, and wanted some coaching on that, so I helped them with the coaching on that. And what they built was really amazing. So it helped them guide their cleaners through the building through cart-mounted tablets that would show them which area they're in, and they were using the, the geolocation and a lot of other things to identify the, the buildings and the places they were in and tell where they, which, which section they were in in the building and things like that. And then give them instructions on how to clean that section, what steps they needed to take. It was a huge benefit for the company because they were able to go back to their clients and say, this is exactly where our cleaners are at. And this is how well they did today. This was their efficiency. They're able to, to, to find out, you know, is a, efficient, is a cleaner slacking off or not? Um, all those kinds of metrics that they couldn't measure otherwise with any other means. Not only that, they were able to train their cleaners in only two days where they were taking two weeks to figure out how to get them through a building. So huge ROI, right? So professional developer, I took the S off since there's only one. <laughs> uh, you know, we don't leave them out. I mean, that's, that's, that's a crowd we very much want to involve because they're super important to driving those, those you know, pieces of the puzzle that are, are evolving right now. So if you were to look at uh, bringing in translation services and things like that, that's still going to take talking to an API. That's still going to take doing some coding on the back end to get to. And that's where they're going to be super important in here. But that's what they want to focus their work on, too. They don't really want to change the font on your UI. That drives developers crazy if there's lots of little changes back and forth. He's smiling. <laughs> OK. Uh, you know, because it's true. So if we empower the, the, the user to do that, the developer has more time now. So our gap isn't as big anymore because we've just made the professional developer more efficient at what they do. Not only that, even if they are developing your app on AppMaker, they're going to be way, way faster. We found, like, so I've been a professional developer for, like, 12 years now. And my efficiency went up by, well, I can develop an AppMaker app in 10% of the time that it would have taken me to do it traditionally. So literally, it probably takes me, well, it actually does. We've tried it. <laughs> it takes me less time to put together a presentation like this than it does to build you an app in AppMaker. So our typical cycle time for most apps uh, most of those, you know, vacation requests and time off request type of apps are typically built in less than two hours. So it's very, very fast. Show you one more uh, demo here. Uh, this one's kind of fun. Uh, does everybody like animals? You guys like animals? Okay. I, I'm sure nobody's going to say no, right? <laughs> so, so I've got a couple of different animals in my database here. Of course, like with a database, this data could be anything. It could be buildings. It could be you know, reports of something or things like that. And of course, every database needs to have some kind of search. And so we could search for well, there's a couple of dogs. So we could search for a dog. But that, that might be too easy. Let's search for a puppy. Um, you know, and, and it works like a database would work. You, know, you would get um, the puppies, right? OK, because we can see that those are puppies. Uh, and so what happens when we do this? Uh, of course, this would be really hard to achieve in a spreadsheet, right? Because the internet's just a little bit slow. Uh, this would be really hard to achieve in a spreadsheet because one, you're showing pictures, right? And then you're having to filter on pictures. Um, you know, 
and you might have different criteria, like like a Mustang, right? Oh, well, you got a couple Mustangs in our database, right? So typically what happens is somebody goes in, they take a look at these pictures, and they say, okay, that's a Mustang, that's a car, I'll add a tag for Mustang. And that's a, that's a horse, if I know horses, I know that's a Mustang, so I'll add a tag for Mustang and horse and car for car and red, and I'm gonna add all those kinds of tags to these things so that I can search for them, right? Because that's how we make databases relevant is we add these tags or different attributes of whatever the record is. The record could be anything, right? We add all these attributes to it so we know what it is. We'll see how this goes for upload speeds. Uh, so I'm gonna add a couple more um, images here to my, to my database. Um, let's do a logo here. Anybody know that what that is? <laughs> okay. Is anybody a fan? Okay. <laughs> you guys aren't like cheering right now. <laughs> Not sure why. Um, okay. Let me let me let me add something. I'll just add in one more here. Just on for the sake of time. So live demos and all that kind of fun stuff. So I added another type of. Uh, so here's a cow, right? Uh, or it could be a bowl if you want to call it that. Uh, so if I want to search my database again for, say, Longhorn, I get both of the Longhorn images I just uploaded, okay? So, I mean, there's no trick going on here. I just uploaded those pictures. You saw me pick them from my computer. But what's going on behind the scenes here is we're taking that picture, and as soon as we upload it, we're sending it off to Google's uh, Vision API, all right, which is going is the AI that's behind scanning pictures and telling you what's in that picture, and it's sending me back tags that I can see. So if I were to click on my my information here, I can see there's information about this what what Google saw in that image, okay, and it's automatically classifying that data into my database. And we can do that with all kinds of things. We can do that with translation. We can do that with language. We can do that with natural speech if we wanted to analyze some kind of speech that's coming in. So there's all kinds of different ways to apply that machine learning. And we can do that by using these additional services that we can call on with Google and then building them into AppMaker apps that are easy to manage. Can yeah. I add a point to that? Absolutely. So it's been interesting. So my team, you know, we work with all the states and counties and cities. Um, over and over again, there's all these cool APIs that we have, but to James's point of cycle time to build something from scratch to make use of that, we've actually had whole counties use G Suite, decide to buy G Suite just for AppMaker so that they could do that thing that he just showed, right? Because he just showed you something that you can build in less than two hours and you can immediately see the license value of what is inside of G Suite in just that one application. So it's a really interesting model because it basically starts to say, because it sits behind that security perimeter that Brad talked about, and as you mentioned, like that satisfies the highest possible like audits that you're going to get, you immediately with just this application can start to open up this entire span of like all of the different machine learning things that Google has available, or really any API endpoint, right? I'll use the Google ones because I know them better, but like any API endpoint, you can just patch it, right? It's amazing, and then the interface is done for you, all of that stuff's super duper easy to use. It's just, when you think of the challenges that you have, right? Like, I answered the question of like, put us in a room, give us your hardest challenges and see what we make of them. I'm almost always gonna take your hardest challenges and land here, and just notice how fast and easy that is, right? Like, I just wanna, fully click on that because it's really something that is differentiating. <laughs> and the more we get into this with our public sector customers, the more this becomes a really attractive way to like get out of access databases, get out of Excel being your single way of running your entire business, right? This is the right way to do something. Like that. Okay. Thank you, Chris. No, that's great. That's that's really great input. It's it's and it's absolutely true. Because we can prototype things like if you just have an idea and you're like, oh, I think this would work really well and I want to test it with a couple people, we can prototype it. We're not going to spend, you know, twenty thousand or fifty thousand dollars hiring professional developers somewhere to build an app just to try it out because you're probably not going to do that. You're never going to get approval for it, right? This gives us the opportunity to actually try those ideas, and if they fail, 
it's fine. The product was included anyway, right? So you, 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 it lowers your barrier and allows you to be able to test and try new things and just push those boundaries. Um, so one of the things we do uh, at Ignite Synergy, so we produce this product at Maker University. So it's at makeruniversity.com. It's a training product that helps you get started on AppMaker, teaches you all the basics. It's an e-learning platform, 74 videos, took me all summer to make. Uh, so, uh, but it, it definitely helps you get started in actually using this product and getting over to it. So thank you all for, for coming in. <laughs> The, so you mean the storage? Yeah, the storage is Google Cloud SQL, which is a, a MySQL database that runs in the cloud. Oh, the images, yeah. So there, the scan, the, the Vision API is scanning those and identifying them and sending back tags. And then we just store those tags in, in the database as a field. So I would assume that you could make that editable where you could add tags if Vision did not pick it up, right? Exactly, so yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. So whatever it identifies, or like uh, to that point, if we were wanting to add information, uh, this field is something we can just click in there and edit and add add more stuff. You know, I can just type right into that field. So I can add more tags. Maybe I have a tag chooser, some other classification. The uh, Google uh, Cloud SQL database. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> very, very. A lot of different ways to control that. Uh, we can filter access down to uh, a certain IP or IP range. Uh, that's you know that's one way just lock everybody out based on IP. So if you have a, a certain agency IP address that's outward facing, then that's the only one that gets to your database. And then you have the authentication model that's built on top of that. So huge amounts of security built into there. Well, the examples look like maybe entry to mid level widget type things, but have you had a client? that has used this to like, convert to a very complex application. Mm -hmm. What's an example of that? So uh, one of the examples is a, a large North American um, athletic company that we work with that does uh, all of their um, project management for, for you know, large things like the Super Bowl and Boston Marathon, things like that, that um, all those budgets that they have where they spend money with all these different you know, ad agencies and banner agencies and whoever they spend money with are all managed through an app maker app right now. Uh, so they have about $2 billion worth of assets that it's currently tracking and millions of rows of data. Sure. Um, so working at the tool, I assume you guys built an a It's like any <coughs> And I wonder, like, if I needed to have, like, complex uh, front-end state manipulation or view management business logic and like a service, how easy is it for me to go crazy and do whatever custom thing? Great question, great question. Thank you for asking, because I, I had actually missed that as one of my talking about the professional developer. AppMaker is a very open ecosystem as far as how it works. So we can import JavaScript libraries that are already existing. So everything out there you can think of, jQuery, jQuery UI, all those things that you're already used to using, plug directly into AppMaker just by adding, adding the URL to the library. Uh, so really easy to use in that respect. It has coding set. It's built on top of AppScript, Google AppScript, which is a JavaScript programming language. And you can build those code files right in the editor and, and be able to modify them in any way. And those also connect to all the other Google services. So if you need to get a list of documents and then find out what images are in those documents or find out what context is in those documents, pull all the metadata, you can do all that within, by using this app script backend that's built into the product. Can you talk a little bit about, I didn't see um, Microsoft reference here. I'm trying to understand this. In, uh, in SharePoint, for example, you can create a document library and give metadata associated to the documents in there, or a list in SharePoint, which is a table, which is then used by a lot of these things. How does your suite handle that? Yeah, another great question. So I mean, there is metadata in documents already that you have access to just by viewing the, the information about that. All of that information is available via API. So if we want to bring Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, that's exactly it. So if you want to take that document 
and bring it into your application, we can just do a simple, well, same kind of picker that we saw here, drop that into our, our database, and then add any kind of information we want about it. And we can also write that back to the metadata of the document itself, so if the document's exported, that metadata can go with it. There's also another uh, add-on for the G Suite Marketplace called AODOCS. Um, AODOCS, if you are coming from a SharePoint world, AODOCS will mirror a lot of that functionality. But there's like a specific reason that that needs to occur. So AODOCS will do things like file locking, check in, check out, those kinds of things that are a little bit more SharePointy. Um, that's one that, that works well in that environment. So like you can do some of it in Pathmaker, but if you were just living inside of Google Drive, it's also available. Great question. And I'd also like to know, so Google uh, covers you across the entire continuum, right? So we just need a spreadsheet, or we just need a form to capture information in the spreadsheet and then put it in the uh, in the graphical display that uh, Chris had, had uh, uh, showed everyone. Or we need something that is kind of like SharePoint, but without all the pain, <laughs> uh, and uses Google's unlimited storage and, and hosts in the, in the cloud, so you can use this solution itself set to build that instead of Colorado, other large state customers have done this. Or when you use AppMaker, uh, a low code a development and hosting environment. Or we want to do super advanced, we want to roll out SAP on Google's infrastructure, that's Google Compute Engine, or we want to develop a Python application and roll it out on Google's platform as a service that's known as Google App Engine. So from beginning to end, we can handle any of those scenarios. Of course, we can really focus on the, on the G Suite software as a service offering. Jeff, can I really tack on that? Because you, you mentioned the state of Colorado. I know they're, they're big Google users, but I know they're also big Salesforce users. So we're kind of watching this, we can't help but think of Salesforce as a development platform as well that has, it's not anything as forward looking as that, but a lot of the same citizen development mm -hmm. capabilities. So when would you, um, how do they look at these cases of when they're choosing one over the other? I know we have, an, by the way, an amazing partnership with, with Salesforce. We're a Salesforce customer, they're a Google customer, and our, our solutions really interoperate well uh, with each other. I don't know if you have specific experience with Colorado. I mean, so a lot of this will then depend on, it depends, this is the easiest answer, right? It depends on the use case. Um, but then the question is, how do you figure that out? Um, so Salesforce, one of the things that I've seen, Salesforce can get expensive, because you basically have to license up every person to have access, right? And so if you start to kind of, if you're gonna, if you're looking at that, you know, like I, I went through this with a county where they, they were paying, it was, it was somewhere around $600,000 a year in licensing for Salesforce for an application. That if you went into pure platform service that just meant an app engine, it would have cost them about 60 bucks a year. Right? That's a big difference, right? So it depends, right? But it was the same thing for AppMaker, right? Like AppMaker does require you to have a license to use the AppMaker application, right? So these are for internal applications, right? You wouldn't necessarily, you could do some, some things where you can actually publish forms and things like that, but generally speaking, this is for internal stuff to your organization. If you want something that's external facing, you might be getting more into, okay, we're gonna build something custom on Google App Engine or something like that. So, one of the bigger qualifiers is who's accessing it, right? Do you have to have them have a license? Is that that's where the cost factor comes in? Um, and then, you know, it's also just a where you want your data primarily living for the application that you're, you're using, right? Because if it's pure like CRM style data, right, where it's about your customers, then yeah, Salesforce is the right place for that. If it's stuff that's more like internal to your organization. I'd probably push you more to your G Suite drive domains, right? Because that's where that data should live, right? So there's a couple of different classifications. It's probably something that you'd want to go through and, and talk to an architect about it to figure out what the right application would be. But just, just to reiterate on that point of licensing, because I was talking with the uh, Health and Human Services team about a particular use case that, uh, that they have. So those that would need to be licensed for G Suite are those that would, would authenticate in the, in the system and store data in the system or build something in the system. So if you create a, a form and publish it over the internet and you want to communicate with all the, the citizens around town and you have 250,000 people that hit that form and submit and all that information is filling out on that sheet, 
all those people don't need to be licensed, just those that would be building the form within the uh, within the agency. Same thing for AppMaker. If you use AppMaker uh, with just a few licenses of G Suite to create an amazing external facing application and have a lot of people hitting that, those individuals don't need to be licensed. Just open it up to other, you know, for any of the, the Googlers who spoke or any subject that you'd like to cover, any other uh, final, and I'll go over the, the, the DIR piece in just a moment. Any other final questions of any of our presenters? And of course, if, if you if you do have a sidebar uh, topic, if you want to pull us aside, uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, we will be following up with the uh, everyone who attended, so expect a, a phone call uh, from us. And if you would prefer just to uh, to, to speak with the individual uh, at that time, that, that's perfectly fine. Um, so everything that we have spoken about today, with a, with a particular emphasis on G Suite, is available on the Texas DIR contract and on DCS, in fact. Um, in government, Google works exclusively with our um, licensed partners. Several of them are here uh, in the room today. So if you are curious about uh, G Suite, about learning more, about pricing, about use cases, about whatever, um, you can.